Instead of extending this video with the demo, I figured we could take a brief moment to talk about one specific edge case that I'm sure haunts every user, and that is this particular area right here, where you actually have a bevel converging with a smoother surface. So let's control N and make a new file, and let's talk about that area. So I'm going to tab in edit mode, press S and Y in order to scale this in, and then I'm just going to add a loop cut down the middle, and we're just going to extrude this area out. So let's say we wanted to have a bevel running along this edge. We see that when we begin beveling, because of this particular edge, the guidance of this bevel gets a little bit skewed. So getting it to look correct is just a matter of dissolving edges that would give it poor guidance. Or we could actually bevel this and select these two points and press J to basically put an edge in between them, solving this equation. And in fact, having this geometry placed the way it is, is pretty advantageous for us to just control X and dissolve it. So there's a lot of areas that come up like this in modeling, and there's a lot of different ways you can go about solving it, but I'm just showing a couple of the ones that I use personally. So I'm just gonna select both of these, and we're just gonna press Control B in order to bevel. And we see that this one gave us the result that was discussed previously, and we see that up top, we were given a slightly different result because of the guidance edge that was given to us from us beveling a partial edge. So if I press Control Shift Tab, we can activate vertex snapping, at least on control. Usually I have snapping off, so that way whenever I press G and Y to move something, snapping only comes up when I press control and hover over the element I intend to snap to. Just one of my favorite aspects about Blender and it's do or do not snap with control behavior. So we can take these edges and dissolve them for this area, we'll just grab this point and this point, press J to combine them. And so, so far so good, right? We can press Alt X and inside of mirror, I'll just press D and we're gonna use symmetry instead of modifier. So that way we can re really mirror this to the other side. And so from here, let's add a bevel. And this is where things get confusing. So I get a lot of questions about how do you make this sort of area work? And there's a lot of ways you can go about it, however, um, let's duplicate this over to the side and let's talk about some options. So first I'm going to sharpen this, which means that every edge a value that matters for beveling has been sharpened, basically marked using the settings that we have specified in our control tilde. This also means that if I were to go under bevel and we press L, we could change the limit method for weight. And what this also means is I can select this area, this entire area, and press Q and unmark and basically we've now allowed the bevel to work on the areas that it's actually able to and ignore the areas that it's not able to. So if we press Alt X and we mirror it with symmetry, we see that our job is done. So when it comes to beveling this particular area, this is an edge case that even Howard's aware of and we've had talks about in the past where it's just one of those edge cases where you have to be a little bit creative when solving it inside of Blender. So we still have our main shape. Let's duplicate it over to the side with Shift D and let's talk about other solutions. So we press Q, we lower our bevel to something reasonable, and we see that with our geometry, this is about as reasonable as the bevel is going to get with the amount of geometry that's present. And we see that it also suffices for this area. I mean, these corners are always going to be a struggle whenever it comes to the bevel. If we press Alt V and we activate wireframe, we could see what kind of struggle that we're actually facing. And we see that this particular edge is just overshooting and then the edge next to it is also overshooting dramatically. So sometimes I will get in and just dissolve an area and begin sliding geometry around in order to kind of alleviate an area. And then from there, I'm able to get even bigger with my bevel. Of course, this requires a little bit more geometry sliding and alleviation, but while this is my least favorite technique, it at least allows me to get to the end of the day and survive a model. So let's talk about this side. The same solutions are still in place. So this area is just too much. We're gonna have to slide things away and just kind of relax this area in order to allow the bevel to do its job. And while this isn't the most effective solution, it's the only one I've been able to find at this time that really works consistently whenever it comes to getting controlled bevels under control or uncontrolled bevels under control, at least until we see other solutions for it. I mean, we could take these two and dissolve them which will simplify this convergence. And we could also dissolve this, which will simplify this area's convergence. And if we were to press Alt X and mirror symmetrize, we see that 
you know, this object looks kind of terrible. Even if we slap a weight at normal on it, because of the amount of compromise we did to the bevel, it does re result in a little bit of fastening. So that isn't actually the best option either. In fact, I would recommend this one as probably the best route. Sometimes you want to shift over to weight, and this is definitely one of those times in which weight can be a good friend for you. So with this particular area, if we wanted to solve it for a third time a different way, then let's see, I would say, let's remove the bevel. Let's select these two faces, shift tilde, which I have shift tilde map to selecting my boundary loop. And I could just control click mark in order to bevel just this one area. But we do want to just get rid of that edge in between because it's causing something I refer to as netting, where basically edges in between of a face selection get netted whenever there's a selection situation because there's not a such thing as edge selection or edge groups or else we would just bevel only edges but instead we have to be crafty with the way that we bevel whenever it comes to blender blender always requires a degree of complexity or a, a degree of creativity in order to really maximize our abilities to use it because if you approach it like a another 3d program you're going to be immensely disappointed especially when you start trying to map things to be like that other program and you find that it's just not quite the same so i'm going to control click mark in order to bevel this area and we can just press alt x and this time i'm going to press x for a modifier mirror and we're going to mirror this to the other side and let's finally deal with the back so i'm just going to select all the sides shift tilde to grab the boundary control click mark press one and there we go so this is probably Let's undo what we did. Did we always have this be the equal amount of rounding that we have with the rest of this? Let's shift click or let's go through modifier scroll. So there's our first bevel. Here's our second bevel. It's our second bevel that went too far. So let's lower that bevel so we get something a little more reasonable. I'm definitely not trying to compromise the flat to bigger um, bevel ratio I have going. And so now on the back, let's just control click, set it to one, and let's all click sharpen. And this is a much better result. So there's a variety of ways you can go about dealing with this particular edge case. And so I wanted to conclude this video just talking about it. Sorry about ranting so long. And with that, I'll wrap up this video. Thank everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.